Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best-selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams your host, and I am back at home on Maui. It's just so delightful to be here after seven weeks of traveling and teaching and exploring the world. And today we're going to talk about something that's very crucial to my life and expanding the possibilities and has expanded so much for me as I've learned to use it more and more. And that is the tool <laughs> and the power of asking questions. Questions bring clarity. They help open us to new possibilities. They allow us to make friends and help people and help ourselves. Uh, questions are such a magical way to expand our lives. So we're going to talk about um, questions that actually backfire and are hard on us and make life harder. We're going to talk about questions that aren't actually questions, those kind of questions that are leading or concluding, and, um, and then some amazing questions to open the door to more money, more ease, more happiness, um, more clarity, all of those things. So we'll, we'll explore all about questions today. And of course, if you ever have a question, <laughs> you can uh, reach out to me at meetkathywilliams.com. I'm also uh, uh, available on Facebook. If you do try to friend me, please drop a little note saying who you are. Because, you know, we get lots of people trying to become our friends. Um, <laughs> so it will just make it that much easier. I will say, oh, yes. Okay, this is a listener. Awesome. And then you can, you know, message me and ask your questions. Also, at meetkathywilliams.com, you can get a free money rain exercise and a create your life exercise. And I get messages from people all the time saying how they use that create your life exercise every morning to really allow new things and new possibilities to show up and to expand the juiciness so the wonder um, of, of the things that are already showing up so um i always love not only your questions but also your topics if you have topics, that means I don't have to come up with them. And also, we're making the short show more relevant to your life. So a couple of the topics we're going to explore later this month are relationship cords, which are so super cool, like to be aware of, because if you can drop those, you have more freedom and flexibility, and so do the people you've been corded with. The other, uh, another topic that we're going to explore later this month is transitions, because for a lot of us, it's back to school time, and, and so creating ease with transitions. Uh, and then the other two topics are up in the air, so if you have something that you'd like to take a look at, uh, ping me your ideas, and uh, when they pop, kind of like popcorn, when they just seem like they're ripe, we will... Uh, I'll add them to the list. All right. So, you know, one of the things that became really clear to me as I started to live more from the question is that that's actually our natural way of being, right? Little kids are constantly asking questions like, what is this? How can I use it? You know, let's say a Q-tip. 
is it yummy? No, it's not. All right, can I stick it in my ear? Can I stick it in my nose? Like, what's it for? Can I paint with it? You know, constantly in the question, uh, in the curiosity of things. And that's really how we learn, right? We learn from being inquisitive. We learn from asking people. We learn about people from asking them. We learn about a lover from asking, what is it you like? Make some noise, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, like asking, so that we can can have more information and more clarity. And you know, lack of information is actually one of the nine major ways people stop themselves. Right? I don't know enough. I don't have enough information. And it's like, well, when you don't have enough information, you can ask, where can I get the information I'm looking for? Right? And when we ask a question, what happens is the universe starts re rearranging itself. When we have an ask, the universe starts rearranging the quantum entanglements to meet your ask. So my favorite example is, is let's say you ask something, oh, who do I need to talk to to get the information I require? Right? And then maybe you're at, this is the example I love. You're at dinner and you hear someone, you know, at the next table talking about exactly what you needed to know, right? It happens that effortlessly. Or I'll give an example too. You know, I was in Colorado this past couple of weeks. And at one point I needed to move further south and I didn't want to stay at the place I was going to be staying. So of course I ask a question like, where else can I stay? I could, and then what happens is when we ask that, right, where else can I stay? Possibilities open up. Every time we ask a question, it opens the doors to possibilities. So then, okay, I could stay at an Airbnb. I could stay at a hotel. I could ask a friend if I can stay with them. I could camp, you know. What else haven't I thought of? There, there's another question. Maybe rent a camper, camper van. <laughs> so a question leads to possibility, right? I, I love to think of when you're asking a question, you're shining your awareness. You're shining the flashlight of your awareness in that direction, which illuminates things. Right, so so I was asking that, and I looked on Airbnb, and there's some decent ones, some good ones, but every one of them felt a little bit off. Right, like ah, and then I'd be like, well, okay, what's off about it? Right, there's another question. What is that? Could be another question. Right, what is that? Uh, is it the time yet to be booking something? And it was kind of getting down to the wire, right? Like that evening, it was time to be in a new place, right? That evening. So uh, a little later, I went on uh, Google and Googled, well, maybe, you know, the Airbnbs have felt off. So how about a hotel, right? And I was looking at hotels and, and um, the internet kept not loading. Right? Like I'd be like, oh, that one looks good. It looks like great location, perfect distance from the clients I'm going to have. It just kept not loading. And I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> Do I need to get closer to the router, right, to, to the modem? And I would get closer. And it's so uh, more questions, right? And as I was... Um, you know, again, trying to get closer, it was still not loading. Someone texted me, where are you? And I said, I, I'm trying to figure that out, actually. <laughs> and I said, you're not sure where you are? And I said, well, I'm, I'm uh, in Fort Collins, and I'm trying to, I'm going to be moving further south. And they said, well, you can come stay with me, right? And, and so I ended up doing that, that it was like, living in the question, right? 
okay, is it not the time? Okay. You know, and, and honestly, my mind wanted to get something nailed down, right? My mind was like, it's time. <laughs> not, is it the time I could have gotten the awareness? Well, not quite, Kathy. There's something around the corner that's going to um, be a beautiful, magical experience that's waiting for you, right? So we like to go to conclusion. Okay, I got to get something nailed down. I have to go tonight. Whereas if I had asked, you know, is now the time, I would have gotten a no because there was something around the corner. So sometimes, actually, when we're trying to make a choice, it's not the time. And there's something waiting. Right? Maybe it's tomorrow is the time to make the choice. Maybe in 10 minutes. But asking that question can be powerful as well because uh, then you're not using all this mental activity trying when it's clearly not the time yet. Now, the other thing that's really useful, a huge key in asking questions is to also use the word truth. Okay? And you can use the, say truth aloud or in your head. But when you say truth, you get to know whether the other person or whether you yourself are lying, all right? And they might not blatantly say like, oh, <laughs> but you'll hear it. Like if I ask my kids, hey, have you brushed your teeth? And I say truth in my head, then they might say, yeah. And I know, oh, okay, let's brush them again, <laughs> right? Like you get to know that that person is lying, right? You get to know for yourself what is true, right? Because we sometimes lie to ourselves, right? It's not the time. We could lie that it is. We could lie and tell ourselves it's not the time to make this choice when really it is, okay? We could lie and tell us it is time to make this choice when really it's not. Okay? So um, definitely asking truth has been a game changer for me because I get to see what's true for me. Um, I'll, I'll give you another example of this. In my class that I teach called Radical Abundance, I have people go through their desires and we look at each of them and I say truth, or we each look at them and say, truth, is this really my desire? Because sometimes being the aware beings that we are, we might be aware that my spouse has that desire for me, or my mother has that desire for me, or I think I should have that desire. It's not actually my desire. It's a societal thing or a family thing or whatever, it's not really my desire. So asking truth, is this my desire, can help bring so much clarity. Oh, it's not. Hmm? So asking truth to yourself or others, even in the courtroom, can make such a big difference in knowing what's real and what's not. All right, and, and conclusion is something we go to a lot. Like I said, in, in, when we're small children, we're used to asking, 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 can I have a lollipop? Can I have some ice cream? Can I, can I, can I? What do you do this for? Why, mommy? Why? Why? All of these different questions. And as time goes on, questions are trained out of a lot of us, right? We start to go to conclusion, even concluding like, well, if I ask that, I'd look stupid. Do you remember, uh, have you ever felt that way at school? I felt that way, like, oh, that's gonna show that I didn't get it. That's gonna show that maybe I'm dumb, right? Other people don't seem to have that question, so I'm not gonna ask it either. So what I'd love to do now is anywhere you've decided asking means you're stupid, you're going to look foolish, you're maybe even greedy, 
or selfish, will you take all of that energy and just collapse it back? Energy. So you take all of that solidification, right? Their patterns, their ener uh, energetic solidifications. We're just going to collapse it all back to energy. Ooh, yeah. And that is actually <laughs> something I got when I kept saying, what's going to be a really fast tool for people to use to clear stuff? You know, and, and living in question, I got that. Collapse it all back to energy. All right. And if there's an energetic clearing tool that works faster or better for you, by all means, use that. Okay. So anywhere you've decided that asking questions means you're going to be rejected, right? You're going to hear no, and that that means something about you. Will you collapse all of that back to energy? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of charge on that because we get all these messages. We and and you know, I mean, like even when you're on the dating scene and you ask someone out or um, if you ask for a job or ask, you know, it's like. The fear of being rejected often inhibits people from asking. Well, what if being rejected means nothing about you? It just means, oh, that's no for now. It just means, oh, they're not in the mood, right? Like, it means nothing about you. So everywhere you've decided it does, will you collapse all of that back to free-flowing energy? Cool. All right. So... As the show goes on, we're going to talk about um, four questions we can do in spaces that we often go to conclusion, even in, um, when you're experiencing a body pain or something like that. Um, we can use these four questions. We're also, oh gosh, we're going to break already. <laughs> we'll also talk about questions that sound like questions that are actually conclusions and questions that work against us so we can kind of unhook ourselves from that and expand into more possibilities thanks for listening to sexy mom feed your soul with waves of consciousness on ohm times radio ohm times magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity wellness and personal empowerment a philanthropic organization their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance course. Kathy also travels, facilitating Radical Abundance and Access Consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look. Flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is your host, Kathy Williams. 
and today we are exploring the power of questions. Questions unlock us from solidification, keep us um, exploring, and, and actually, let's take a real life example. Um, if you look at the Wright brothers, uh, who created the first airplane, you know, they had to start by functioning from a question. Hey, what, and I'm not sure what it was, but something along the lines of like, hey, what if we could make a machine that would help people fly? How would we do that? What could we use? And then as they explore, well, that didn't work. Okay, what else could we use? Huh, what kind of design would be more aerodynamic? Oh, what materials, what other materials, right? As people even innovate or make things better, it's always, you know, what could I use to make this better? How could it work faster? That's even how I got this idea of, of using collapse it all back to energy as, as a clearing, right? I asked what would be faster than this? What would be faster than what I already know, right? What's possible beyond this is a great question too. Um, so asking to innovate, asking to, to expand, you know, how can we make this better? You could apply that when you're cooking dinner. My mom needs more salt. <laughs> You know, the, it, this is an example of a leading question, right? Does this need more salt? And a, a question that's not so leading is, what would make this better? And then you might find that, oh, some some cumin seeds or, or some garlic salt would make it even better, right? So that kind of like a leading question versus an unleading question um, would be, you know, does this need more salt versus what would make this better, okay? Um, let's say you're working on someone and you say, well, does that make you feel more expansive versus how did that make you feel, right? When, when you say, does that make you feel more expansive, then they have to look at expansive and either align and agree and say yes or look at it and say, no, actually. Instead of an unleading question, right, that you're not leading them, is um, with no assumptions, right, this, this has no assumptions, it's an open question, how did that make you feel? Or what's present for you now? Do you get the difference? If you don't, please let me know at meetskathywilliams.com, and Kathy has a K. Um, another example of, of a question that's actually a conclusion would be something someone said to me once. What's been going on between us for the past 24 hours? Okay, so that actually has a lot of assumptions in it, right? It's not a real question, right? It's assuming that something's been going on between us. Well, something's been going on, it's between us and it's been going on for the past 24 hours, right? Lots of conclusions in there versus, hey, is something going on between us? Is a different kind of question. Or, you know, is something up? That's a different kind of question too, right? So when you're asking questions, start to look at it. Am I actually concluding? Do I have assumptions? within my question. And if you do, see if you can find a way to ask it in a different way. What is possible beyond this? What is possible I haven't considered? These are questions that don't have um, conclusions within them. So I'm gonna um, explore four questions I got from Access Consciousness that you can use for anything. And I really like these because they have helped me out of so many holes. And in fact, they have helped shift both my body and my children's bodies out of things that actually if we had concluded, we would have been stuck with. And I'll give an example of that. But first, I'll run through the question. So the first one is, what is this? Okay. Asking, again, 
kind of shines the flashlight of your awareness to, well, what is this? Hmm? What can I do with this? Or what do I do with it? Can I change it? And, you know, sometimes I go right from what is this to can I change it? Don't even ask that second one. Okay. The third question is, if so, how can I change it? Right? You might actually get a no to can I change it? Um, but if you get a, a sense of yes, and if so, how? So let's take a real life example. When my son, well, my younger son was about two, two or three, he started to get a boogery nose. And I asked him, hey, Cole, what is that? Okay. What can you do with that? And he said, give it to the earth. If you've heard me on the radio before, especially when I uh, co-hosted Imperfect Brilliance show, you may have heard this. He said, give it to the earth. And I was like, what? Give it to the earth. Uh, and he said it so quickly that I didn't quite catch it. And he goes, the ground. And I was like, oh, okay. So he took all that energy that his body was processing and he sent it down to the earth. And the next day he did not have any more of it. He did not have a cold. See, if we had both gone to, me first and then him, because he follows my lead, if we had gone to, he has a cold, well, that's a conclusion. And a cold has a trajectory, right? It has a direction, it has a duration, or right? the direction is usually worse. <laughs> For the first at least four days. <laughs> and then it could get better maybe. Um, so it has things you can do and not do to get rid of it. But we didn't even go to conclusion. We just went to, huh, what can you do with that? I can give it to the earth. I need it, and it was gone. All right, similarly, when you conclude something, especially when you go to my, right, my bad knees, my back pain, you know, whatever it is, start to unhook yourself from identification with that thing, right? You've made it yours. Let's not make it yours anymore. It's energy. All of this is energy. Like every single thing you see, my voice, <laughs> every sensation you have, energy. So think of something right now that you'd like to change. Okay. What is it? What is that? And maybe you want to pick something with your body. I don't know. What is it? What can you do with it? Can you change it? Hmm. And how? And as you start to function from question more and more, this can be very light and very quick. What I mean by light is really subtle awarenesses. Like even before I had asked those four questions, I was focusing on a little sensation in my belly. And I asked, what is this? Um, and then immediately I got like breathe into it, right? So that's what do I do with it? And also then take probiotics. Cool, right? Fast, easy. Sometimes it's not gonna be hit your head, hit, <laughs> hit yourself over the head awareness. Sometimes it's gonna be super subtle. Sometimes you might not get the answers right away. If it's your body, you can ask, hey, body, what do you know about this? Hey, body, what do you know about changing this? Okay. If it's your pet or your kid, you can ask the same thing. Hey, what's your awareness about it? What do you know about changing this? Right? And I love to journal, especially if something seems sticky really love to journal because questions can spur your unconscious mind to like um, come up with whatever it is you need, right? Questions as we talked about in the first part, invite the universe to rearrange itself to show you. I also love that to ask, hey universe, show me. Can I change it? 
how can I change it? Universe, make it really clear. A body, make it really clear. All right. So another, um, let's say that you get, no, I actually can't change it. Right? Some things you can't change. <laughs> like other people. <laughs> like who is in charge of your country at this point. Right? <laughs> Different things. There are some things you cannot change. So how can I work around that is a great question. How can I use that to create greater possibilities? How can I use that to create a future that's greater than I could imagine? Right? So you're asking. And that awareness might not come instantly, although it might, all right? So again, like when questions have been trained out of us, when we're used to going to conclusion, like this is a cold, or this is my back pain, or this is, yeah. oh, they're just like that, okay? That's not a bad thing. Just when you find yourself concluding, ask a question. They're just like that. Oh, okay. How could I use that to create something greater? They're, that person's just like that. Oh, well, how could I coax them into a different possibility? Or is there a way that I could interact with them that would create something greater, right? Or what energy do they require right now? I remember, you know, when my kids used to fall down a lot when they're younger, they, um, you know, get scrapes and boo-boos and stuff like that. I started to have the go-to question, what energy do they require of me, right? Because sometimes they truly would get injured, in which case it's a very different energy from that, that moment when a kid falls down and then they look at you to gauge your reaction to see, oh, should I cry? <laughs> Is mom gonna overreact? In which case I'm gonna ride this and cry and make it all dramatic. You know, what energy do they require of me? And that would allow me to tap into it and be it for them. And asking that question isn't only relevant of small children. It's relevant of a lover. Right? What energy do they require of me right now? Well, that could be support. Well, that could be a little space. Well, that could be, you know, lovey-dovey. That could be a, a little more fierce and controlling. You know, like, it depends on the situation. So what energy can I be right now that's going to create the greatest possibilities? What energy do they require of me? And then this one's different. What energy can I be right now that's going to create the greatest possibility? Because you can use that with people, with your projects, with all sorts of things. So let's talk about projects for a moment. All right? When you're looking at a project, you can start to talk with, play with, and interact with the project as though it's a being kind of as though it's a friend of yours. Like, what do you require of me right now? If you have a business, or if you have a class you're creating, or if you have you know, a, a, an artistic project, what do you require right now? What energy can I be to help you expand into your, the greatest thing you can become? I uh, created a book, it's on Amazon, it's called uh, Relationships Done Easy. And I really got a sense that it wanted to create, be created, it was kind of like an energy that I, it was palpable to me. And so I said, okay, I will create you, you just have to show me everything and make it really clear. All right, so who would you like, well, first question I ask, is now the time? No, okay. When is the time? And I clearly heard November. Okay, cool. Okay. So I put it aside and came back to it in November. Now what I didn't ask is, uh, like November 1st, I went to it, right? <laughs> I didn't ask is now the time. It turned out like later November was the time to start. 
and I asked it, what's your name, right? What would you like to be called? But who would you like to be involved? Right? It's uh, a, a compilation. So I engaged all different authors, uh, psychologists, various people to be a part of the book. And it was all through this process of asking questions and following my awareness. And that expanded the book into, it's published by Happy Publishing. So Relationships Done Easy by Happy Publishing, uh, uh, published through them with, um, by Kathy Williams. And it became their number one book that year, outselling all of the other books, right? So just by asking questions, what's required? What day would you like to be released? Would you like your own website? Um, what's going to create the greatest ease with this? I know I'm rattling off questions here, but it really was like talking with a friend. What do you need today? Do you require anything today? And getting a sense of what is required. Sometimes it was just like, take a break. Okay? Um, and, and there was a point at which it felt like the book is done, but it's not finished. And I was like, what do you, what, what's missing? What would you like now? And it was like my chapter. Oh, okay. I've been asking all along if it wanted a chapter from me. <laughs> and it wasn't until all the other chapters were ready that it was my turn. Okay. So this constant curiosity, because if I had concluded, oh, it doesn't want a chapter of Kathy's, right, then it wouldn't have had one. But it, it was a constant question of, hey, what now? What now? Oh, now is the time for Kathy's chapter, right? So one thing we sometimes do is take our awareness and make it a conclusion, right? And like, um, let's say, oh, that's not a nice person. Like 13 years ago, you decide someone's not a nice person, yet they've changed. <laughs> so don't make your awareness a forever thing. <laughs> All right? Always remain in the question with awareness of this moment now. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. We'll be, we'll be back in just a moment with some amazing questions from Fox Godin. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. And together, we can discover what's really going on.
Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is your host, Kathy Williams. And today we are talking about the magical power of asking questions. And one of the reasons I say magical power is because it opens up, do asking questions opens up so many spaces of possibility where if we were to conclude, we wouldn't see that possibility. Um, you know, and I'll give you an example of that. I once hosted a facilitator who said, I would like to have a class at the beach. What beach could we have it at? Right? Question. Okay, cool. So I immediately thought of a beach. And then I said to myself, that beach ha doesn't have enough shade. Conclusion, right? So I shut the door to that possibility. If I had asked, oh, is there a spot with shade? Then my awareness, even though my brain might not know where that is, my awareness, I would get a sense of expansion because there was a place with shade and we ended up having our class there, right? So opening up spaces and places that you hadn't thought of, even by asking, what are the possibilities I haven't considered here? Or if you have an either or type thing, well, what if I could do both? Or is there a way to use both of these? You know, a lot of us just think when we have an either or that we have to choose one or the other instead of and, right? So, so whenever you find yourself concluding, you know, like, oh, I can't afford that, go to a question. What if that weren't so is one of my favorite questions. What if that weren't so? All right. It looks that way right now, but what would it take to have that? Um, what if that could show up with greater ease than I had imagined? Right? I told you I was going to talk a little bit about questions that backfire on us. And, and sometimes those are those leading questions, right? Um, it, like, um, well, I mentioned earlier, so we're not going to go into those too much, but um, also questions like, um, what's wrong with me? Or why does this always happen to me? Right? Not such great questions. <laughs> why is that person such a jerk? <laughs> not great questions, all right? <laughs> There's no stupid questions, <laughs> but like those aren't aiming the flashlight of your awareness in the direction you'd like to go. So if someone's acting a certain way, like, why are they like that? Right? What if you instead say, okay, what would it take to coax them into a different possibility? Maybe now is not to, just not the time to interact with them. Right? Is now the time. Oh, what could they require here? Okay, we, we explored that question a little bit earlier. What do they need to hear is another question I love, because you can use that in email. You can use it in text. You can use it in conversation. What does this person need to hear from me? What do they need in order to choose this? Um, in fact, I just thought of an instance I'm going to use <laughs> that in an email reply. All right. So asking questions that aim you in the direction you'd like to go instead of aim you into, why does this always happen to me? What's wrong with me? Right? What if you ask, okay, what would it take, right? Instead of why does this happen? Okay, what would it take to create something different? What would I have to choose? What would I have to do and be different than what I'm doing now? 
what action would I have to take? All right. So um, opening the door in that way to what you want. All right. When you're going into what's wrong with me? Okay, cool. How can I use where I am now, what I've chosen already, to create something greater? What's right about me? What's working for me? Opening the door to what you desire instead of looking and um, digging around in the muck. In a moment, we're going to talk about a couple of questions from Seth Godin. But I really would like to, I, I realized um, you probably heard my ad a couple of minutes ago about uh, the foundation class. And I would love to invite you to my last foundation class, which will be on Maui, the beautiful island of, of Maui in Hawaii, on August 20th through 23rd. And if you uh, need a BARS class, that's the prerequisite for the foundation, we can organize one. Um, and there are also facilitators all over the world for that. The foundation is something that I've seen rock people's worlds, like with it, because what you get is a toolbox full of different things you can use, um, different questions, you know, different energetic processes to unlock the places you've been stuck to create a different possibility and um, to heal your body as well, to uproot old patterns, all these different things. And um, this will be, I think this is my 29th foundation class that I've facilitated. And over the years, it's evolved. You know, I, I integrate different exercises so that the tools are really real for you um, so that you know how to use them before you leave. So you've had an experience of, of integrating them into life experiences before you leave this island, which is magical in itself. And um, so you can find out more about that at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. Also on that website is one of my favorite things, which is the Abundance Alchemy Retreat. It will be here on Maui in October. Uh, three and a half days of magic, of real practices to increase your abundance and release yourself from all the scarcity programming you uh, you grew up with or you know has, has impacted you from society. Super amazing. So. There's one in October, and there will also be one in February. And then the last thing I'd love to invite you to is a class called, um, I totally forgot the name of it right now, but <laughs> it's about uh, unhooking from your family's financial insanity, right? Because a lot of people got so many, um, so much programming of lack and scarcity from their families. And that one is a one hour online class in um, August 9th. So you're so welcome to enjoy that with me. And it's something you'll be able to listen to again and again. And all of those classes, the foundation in person, abundance alchemy in person, and all the online classes um, are at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. Also, if you'd like private sessions, those are um, available as well. And one of my truly favorite things to do um, because we can zero in on what's sticking you and uproot it really fast. All right, so two questions from Seth Godin. I've been reading one of his books called Footprints on the Moon. It's lovely. Um, anyway, it started with a, uh, a night that he was sitting there with Neil Armstrong and Neil looked up at the moon and he said something to the effect of, I've been there. You know, how cool is that? <laughs> like, whoa. All right. So, um, he says two of the, of the questions that change makers ask is who's it for when you're creating something? Who's it for? When you're setting out to make um, sessions for people or a business, who's it for? 
when you're creating a, a an artistic piece or a symphony, who is it for? Because it's not going to be for everybody. I know sometimes we wish everybody would like it, but everyone will not, right? <laughs> like, so who is it for? Right? And then what? As in, what's it for? Right? So let's talk about, like, let's say you're having a meeting. And what is it for? Oh, it's because we always have a meeting on Wednesday. Okay. Wait, is it for more clarity? Is it to clarify a direction? Is it to look at where we've been? Or if you're advertising, you know, who is it for? Right? Who are you trying to reach with your advertising? Okay. It's not going to be everyone. Is it mothers with children? Is it old people? Right? If you're if your advertising depends, you're not going to be advertising depends for twenty year olds. Right? It's going to be for for older individuals. Right? So who is it for? Okay. What do they believe? What do they want? What are they looking for? What's their story? Like, what's the the story they tell themselves? Um. What, what would they talk about with their friends? What are their interests, right? Who do they trust? Um, and then what's it for? Let's say you have a new ad. Okay, what's it for? Is it to get people in the door? Is it just to get your name out? Is it, what's it for, right? Um, to get more shoppers into stores get more people into your online class, right? Okay, and then will this do that? How will this do that? Okay. Um, if your kid is crying, what's it for? <laughs> Trying to get my own way, right? Well, what's it for? All right. So, so he gives an example here too, like in, in what's it for? We have a meeting at 4 p.m. Okay, what's it for? Well, we always have this meeting. Um, so the what's it for is it's easier to maintain the status quo than to risk not having the meeting. What's the meeting for? To make sure the people who like having the meeting aren't upset, right? Like <laughs> there's always a what's it for. And so to look at that, and, and even in the behaviors that, that you don't like, right? Okay, I pick my face. Kathy does that. Right? What's it for? Oh, because it feels so rewarding. Okay, well, is there another way to get that need met? Right? There's another question. Oh, yeah. Flossing my teeth could feel really rewarding, too. Right? Or, or like, putting a good face cream on could feel really rewarding, too. Like, you know, what's it for is so useful, especially in those actions that we take that we feel like are self-sabotaging or holding us back. It's like there actually is a reason you're doing it or has been a reason you, you know, had been a reason you started and now you might just be continuing doing it because that's what you've always done, like the meeting on Wednesday. You know, so looking at something and, and looking at really what's it for? What's the positive outcome that I'm trying to experience from this behavior that seems like a negative behavior? Right? I found myself, I used to respond to my husband, oh, he, he would ask me like, this cream smells bad. <laughs> you wanna smell? And I'm like, no, I don't wanna smell it, right? Like, I trust you, right? Well, what's his behavior for? Oh, he wants to confirm with me that it's, it's not good. Like he doesn't want to waste it if I think it's still good. Okay, cool. Right? Then I can see the positive action in his behavior. Well, we can look for that in ourselves and in others. And in that way, we open up the door to other possibilities. Hey, babe, I get that you want to make sure that you don't waste anything. And it's totally fine with me if you throw out the cream without asking me. You're the person who uses it anyway. <laughs> so oh, these two questions from Seth Godin, who is it for and what's it for, can help you just clarify. And then you can also clarify, like, 
Is it necessary? Is it necessary to have the meeting? Is it necessary to have um, this advertisement done in a certain way? Or do I have to tweak it in order to make it really reach or target the people I'm trying to target? Constancy in the curiosity. Um, and, and at first it might feel like, oh, it's a lot more work to keep asking questions, but really what it's going to do as you do it more and more and more is open up the door to greater possibilities. Whenever something feels like it's stuck or sticking you, what is this? Oh, like a lot of times when I find that something seems to be sticking me, it's, it's often that uh, I'm telling myself about it. Um, something that's not true. Okay, so I might be saying, oh, well, you know, I can't do that because that person doesn't like me, and then I have to look at it. Is that really true? Oh, no. Okay, cool. That's why it felt like a stuck place in my universe. So looking at each of the things that you conclude about, and instead of going to the story, asking another question. Whenever you go to conclusion, oh, my back pain or, or you know, whatever, ask another question so that you can unstick yourself and create a greater possibility. All right, guys, I'm here for you every Thursday live on IOM.FM. You can also find me on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. I love YouTube. <laughs> and meetskathywilliams.com. Please hop on over to get a free uh, Create Your Life exercise at meetskathywilliams.com and also to ask your questions and submit your show ideas. I love that. All right, guys, until next time, uh, you can find the YouTube, I mean, the replays.